Hello my lovelies, this is the Scarlet DM, and today I'm going to walk you through setting up a scene for your D&D games in Foundry. This is a quick start guide, but if you guys would like me to go into more detail later, I can do that in a future video. For now, let's jump right into making a scene quickly. First, you're going to want to navigate to the Scenes Directory tab in the right hand side of your screen. Select Create Scene, give it a name, and click Create New Scene. The first thing I do is upload an image that I will be using for my map. Do this by clicking on the Browse Files button by the Background Image field. You can upload a new map, but I'm going to pick one that I've already added to my library. You can move your view around the map by right-clicking and dragging. You can zoom in and out by scrolling the mouse wheel. Alright, this looks good, but we still have a little bit of work to do. We can return to the configuration page by left-clicking the scene here, or right-clicking in the Scene Navigation bar and selecting Configure. Here we can rename our scene and decide if it will appear in the navigation bar. You can also choose whether players can freely move to it themselves or if only the GM can. If for some reason you would like to display a different name in the navigation bar, you can set it here. You probably notice that the grid of the map's image doesn't line up with the grid in Foundry, so let's fix that. Under the Grid tab, select the Grid Configuration tool. You'll see the grid highlighted in red, and we basically want to line this up with the grid on our map. It might be tempting to change the grid size, but I prefer to adjust the background image scale so that our tokens will not be affected. Find a cross intersection on the map image and line it up with the red grid. From here, you can decide if your image is too big or too small and enter in a value to make the adjustment. Here I've decided that my image is too large, so I will type a value in less than one. You'll have to play around with this a bit until you find that your grid lines up. I'm also going to drop the scene grid to zero opacity since the map's art grid is already visible. Now let's add an initial viewpoint, a spot on the map where our players will begin when the scene is activated. Click to drag your view to a part of the map you would like to begin the scene on and click this crop button. Don't forget to save. Now let's quickly set up some walls. Select the wall control button on the toolbar on the left and select draw walls. By holding the control button down while you click, you can quickly put down walls in no time at all. I like to set up my walls on the outside edge so that the players can enjoy the art of the map. We can draw in doors with this tool here. Doors are interactive and can be opened by the player. You can also lock them as the DM by right clicking on the door icon with the token controls selected. Let's quickly throw down some lighting to breathe life into our scene. You can easily draw light sources, which is found under lighting controls. I want lighting to come from this fireplace, so I'm going to click and drag where I want the light to be. You notice that it is contained within the walls that we drew. You can further customize the light source by double clicking on the light bulb icon. Since this is a fire, I set the light color to orange and lowered the intensity just a little bit. Then I went to light animation and picked torch. I'm going to make some similar lights for each of these candles, clicking and dragging a smaller section and setting similar parameters. I can then select the icon and using Ctrl C and then Ctrl V, I can copy and paste the light source and move it wherever I need it. This is a really quick way to throw lighting down in a scene. Finally, we can add some ambient sound. Drawing ambient sound works a lot like drawing light sources. I'm going to make this fireplace crackle by adding a fire sound effect that I have. In the sound configuration, we can select the source file path. You can decide if the volume level of the sound will be adjusted depending on how close a token is to the source and if the source is contained by walls. Let's configure a final thing before we drag our token into our new scene. Under the lighting tab, I like to click unrestrict vision range. If you keep this unchecked, any tokens will be invisible if they happen to be out of range of your token's vision. This option might be useful if you are creating a mysterious dungeon with a strong exploration factor, but for scenes like taverns and towns, I like to leave the vision range unrestricted. I also want to lower the darkness level just a little bit to add some ambiance. If you have music that you would like to play upon loading the scene, you can pre-select a playlist and a sound to load immediately. I will show you how to create playlists and sounds in a future video. For now, I'll select a scene playlist and track that I want to play. Now that the basic scene is set up, we can populate it with any characters we need. I'm going to place several bandits around the tavern. I'm also going to place the player tokens so that when I activate the scene, my players will already be able to view the map. Alright, it's time to activate our scene. You'll know which scene is activated by the target symbol to the left of its name. 
Right now my splash page is activated, but let's go ahead and right click our new scene and hit activate. All right, this should be everything you need to know to get started on setting up scenes in Foundry VTT. You can get a lot more in depth with walls, lightings, and other features, so we'll cover those in future videos. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you really enjoy these guides and D&D actual plays, consider subscribing. Or you can hang out with me on Twitch, where I stream my Out of the Abyss campaign every Sunday. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.